Hello and welcome to Open Your Mind Radio. You have myself, Alan James. And you have myself, Stephen George. Good evening. Good evening. It's Sunday the 11th of Jan 2015 and you might uh, hear that my voice is a bit weird. I have actually been hit by this dreaded flu that's going around so I'm a bit sniffy and a bit hoarse. And if I disappear for one or two minutes, I have to blow the nose, unfortunately. He is definitely hoarse. He was even eating oats today. Nay. 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 <laughs> so, so if, if I disappear, we'll, uh, I'm going to pass it over to Steve. And uh, before we uh, crack on, I just want to say thanks, Steve, for a big helping hand today in sorting out my brakes and my discs on my car. <laughs> I didn't do anything. I was like, I was like the nurse just handing the tools. You done all the work. Yeah, but it was it was a helping hand. You were there, you know. You were there in person. I was there pointing and laughing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he done the work. It was rounded in the rain. In the rain, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, two hands, four hands makes lighter work. Okay. Our guests on tonight, we have Bob Fletcher, who's an investigator, and uh, they tried to kill Bob three times in 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 his uh, life doing. You know, uh, real intricate investigations, and Bob knows about the Iran Contra affair and the drug running from Vietnam, and a hell of a lot more. But we won't even get into that tonight because we're going to be talking about Planet X, and um, because that's the major thing that's on the radar at the moment. And to be honest with you, if Planet X is real, the last thing we're going to be worrying about is water meters. To be honest with you, we're going to be wor- worrying about survival. So, um, so we'll be bringing Bob in in a few minutes. And later on, at the end of the show, just for about 10 minutes, hopefully we'll have Finbar Markey on. Finbar is going to come on from the Land League and just give us an update and let us know what's going on. But as usual, we're going to Alan and Steve's week. We're going to leave at the end because we do want to get Bob in and get talking about the Planet X. But there's a couple of things, a couple of announcements that we have to make anyway. And Steve's going to kick us off with that. Yes, I am. The first thing we're going to do is let you know how you can communicate with us this evening, if you do so wish. The communication channels are email info at oymireland.com by phone 046 1212 and you can also contact us direct through the OYM chat room. 046 is the magic number for the studio this evening and every evening. Again, if you want to ring in from outside the Republic of Ireland, it's going to be 00353 We also have the live chat box on the website as well. That's uh, up and running. Some people in there, so I'll say hi to all of you. We're going to be monitoring the People's Internet Radio chat room as well for questions over there. And on anti-social media, if you want to team up with us there, we are on Facebook. We're also on scene.is. So uh, scene.is, that's kind of a, uh, another variation of Facebook. It's on Icelandic servers, so therefore it's away from all the... The um, well, the censoring that's got seems to be going on with Facebook at the moment. We're also on YouTube. Yes, we've got a YouTube channel. We have all our videos uh, and our podcasts up there. Well, most of them anyway. They're all up there for your listening and viewing pleasure. Alan. Back to you, Steve. Back to me. It's like tennis. Okay, we want to say a big thank you to some of the People's Internet Radio listeners. That's the PIR listeners who made donations to OYM via PIR. So, again, a very, very big thank you to everyone over there and uh, all those who do donate. Especially, well, uh, also, sorry, the people who donate uh, through OYM as well. It does help keep the wheels in motion. Uh, and, you know, it does help us to get a few bits and pieces in and uh, also... You know, it, it, pay, it pays for, for the Skype, you know, when we have to ring, ring people on Skype, it does uh, pay for that as well. Uh, the next thing we're, we're actually going to be looking at getting of monies that have been donated so far is either a laptop or a computer to upgrade the one that I have here beside me. Because uh, in Alan's own words, it's as slow as anything. <coughs> now, I don't know how slow anything is, but this is as slow as anything. It, it's very <laughs> slow. It needs to be upgraded. And this is part of the whole donation thing is to try and upgrade what we have or get new equipment in on the studio so and pay off certain you know fees for the likes of website hosting and annual fees stuff that you have to normally pay um stream fees and all that kind of stuff so skype fees and you know yourself so it's it's great thanks a lot for everybody donating now the other thing that's on the list now finbar will probably talk about this later on but apparently ktech security they're the security company that have been helping irish water um kind of um, protecting the Irish water workers, I suppose, is a polite way of doing it. Well, they're having a big do in the City West Hotel on the 26th of January. 
uh, in the evening around 6 or 7 and there's going to be a massive protest there so if anybody lives nearby or fancy, fancies a big protest regarding KTEC security you need to pop down there if you can make a pop down I'm sure um, Finbar will tell us about it when he comes on but just to let you know the 26th of January at the City West Hotel between 6 and 7 pop down there there's going to be a big protest Steve it's probably going to be cold so maybe a flask of tea or a flask of soup and a couple of sandwiches because I don't think you, I don't think we're going to get any from uh, the people in KTEC definitely, definitely not, not. Uh, next on the list we have the, the property charge we have been asked to mention this that return to sender for some people, others are just throwing the, uh, the the packs in the bin. And that's not the thing to do. They always return them to sender. Again, what we're saying here, don't, don't take it as legal advice. But, you know, again, do your own research. But it's better to, to return it to sender and let them know that you do not accept their offer of contract instead of just throwing it in the bin. Because throwing it in the bin is, uh, I believe, it's acquiescence. Yeah, yes, because totally. yeah, if, yeah. if you don't send it back, then your silence is your consent. Exactly. It's presumed. So. It is. It's it's, pre, it's presumed. So, again, return to sender. Go over to People's Internet Radio. Go over to WeThePeople.ie. There's plenty of information over there. Harry has a, lot, a plethora of information on, on WeThePeople.ie in relation to return to sender. So don't just throw it in the bin or in the fire. And remember, according to the ex-Inland Revenue head, that will be one Miss Josephine Feely, we are taxed by consent. So that came straight from the horse's mouth. I mean, horses, man. And, and we have that. And we have that horse is getting a lot of uh, wear and tear on the that show tonight. That horse needs to be whipped. That's it. We have um, a PDF of the that article that uh, Vin tracked down on the Inland Revenue website, and we have a PDF version. If you want to have a copy of that PDF version, send us an email to info at oimradio.com, and we'd be happy to send you that copy of the PDF where Josephine Feely tells you that we are taxed by consent three times in the article. Now, the, uh, there's a bit, um, what's going on as well is apparently there's a lot of people feel they have been missold. Um, when they got their mortgage out, they feel that the bank told them they were, they were going to have um, cover, life insurance cover, uh, when they actually took their mortgage out. But it transpires that um, it's actually assurance and not insurance. So they were sold assurance and not insurance. And that if anything happens to their partners, the money goes straight to the bank to pay off the mortgage and it doesn't go to them. Now, the difference between people can get confused between insurance and assurance. And basically, it's this insurance. You insure your car just in case you have an accident. Okay, So it's just in case you have an accident, you're in, you insure something. But assurance is a guarantee that something's going to happen, like your debt. You're going to die. So what they've done is, what the banks did is they sold people assurance um, where if, well, if you or your partner or yourself, if you have, it, have a mortgage, if you die, the money goes straight to the bank to pay off the mortgage. And a lot of people feel that they were missold because they thought they were getting insurance where the money would go to them and then they would decide what to do with the money. So, uh, and I'm in that uh, situation as well. I'm checking into it as well uh, with my bank, getting the paperwork and stuff like that. And uh, thanks to Dermot Murphy, uh, Dermot, uh, I was talking to Dermot during the week. Dermot was on the show a few weeks ago and we had a good chat about this. So, if you feel that you've been missold, go and check it out. Ask for, go to Data Protection. I think it's six euro to request all the information that the bank has on you. They're legally obliged to give you that information. And then you can decide what you want to do with that. Some people are actually going to court over it and saying they're being missold um, because they thought it was they thought it was insurance and not assurance. So it's up to you what you want to do there. And Steve, if you can take uh, the last one there because I'm getting a bit blocked up here. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, yes, okay, it will be a pleasure. Yeah, it seems we're paying for uh, Kenny and Burton, that's uh, Enda and Joan, to go to Paris to join a really, a rally, not a really, a rally. Uh, this is one of these hashtag Twitter things, isn't it? I'm not too up to speed on these, but it's, it's hashtag J E S U I S Charlie. That's a Je suis. Je suis, is it? <laughs> Je suis Charlie. Okay. A rally. So it's the hashtag Je suis, Je suis Charlie. Yeah, the same people who who send out riot squads when their own people 
use use protests to speak freely. It beggars belief. They lock themselves away from their own people's free speech, yet pretend to support it in another country. Are they not even the tiniest bit ashamed? They should be. They should hang their heads in shame. I mean, uh, as Alan was telling me there today, I wasn't aware of this until Alan told me that uh, yeah, they're, they're flying off to France, you know, to, to be to be there with with the, with the French people and support them and support their right to free speech and all. While over here, you open your mouth. Uh, in relation to water meters being installed against your will or wish and you're served with an injunction to stay 20 or 200 yards whatever it may be away from them and the fact that where Shannon is now a kind of um, stopover for fuel for certain aircrafts uh, US aircrafts and stuff like that has now made Ireland a bit of a target as well apparently really? yeah so there you go. So we Ireland is now a target. We're supposed to be a neutral country, but you know, using the, letting the US land their planes in Shannon to refuel and do various things has made Ireland a target now. Funny enough, but sure, wasn't there something there? Wasn't there a law or, or an act or whatever piece of legislation signed a couple of years ago that actually granted the US full permission and full, full rights to do what they want in this country? That's right. That was in yeah. 2005, and I have a PDF copy of that. If anybody wants to have a look, they can come into your house and do anything you want. Uh, the, that's the you know US military and CIA, FBI, and you you don't have a leg to stand on basically. So. That was signed by one of our ministers, by the way. Okay, so we're going to leave Alan's week and Steve's week to later on. But for now, um, what we'll do is we'll bring in Bob because we really want to crack on with this Planet X because it's, it's, we only have limited time and there's loads to talk about. So good evening, Bob. How are you? Oh, I'm pleased to be here. And I'm very, very good condition considering everything, I guess. <clears throat> Brilliant I'm stuff. I'm becoming an old man, by the way, you know. Uh, the, the clock's ticking on me. I've been around chasing corrupted people in government for 30 years, and it's not a hobby, and I'm not a journalist per se. Uh, I have produced several investigative DVDs and uh, VHS programs um, in respect with uh, criminality in the United States, and of course it's global, uh, but uh, I'm still here. They've tried to stop me a few times, but uh, I'm still causing a lot of grief. So, uh, uh, But I'm glad to be here today. Brilliant. And fair play to what you're doing. Now, as I said earlier on, just in the show there, that you know all about the Iran Contra affair and the, the Clintons and the drug running and the money laundering. And you've done so many investigations into all this information. But there, that's not the topic we're going to talk about tonight. What the topic is that we're interested in is Planet X. Um, Nirubu. Now, Bob, a lot of people think it's it's a uh, conspiracy theory, a woo-woo kind of subject, and oh, there's no such thing as Planet X. We we even have had a number of guests on, and they said one guest, Albert uh, Alfred Weber, said that the timeline changed in 2012, and the Planet X timeline is not going to happen anymore. And then we had Randy Kramer on, who's ex-military who said, oh, the Planet X thing, that's not going to happen. You know, it's, it's, it's way, way in the past. It came and went, and that's it. End of story. So, of course, so, and there's a load of people like Martian Masters is out there talking about Planet X, some great information from Martian Masters, and people are saying that, well, he's FBI, CIA, he's a hoaxer, daddy. You know, so there's a lot of uh, people out there knocking the Planet X thing. Now, I completely understand the fact that they cannot let people know that this is coming in. Because if they want society to stay as it is, okay, and I've always said to people, if you were Barack Obama and you knew Planet X was coming in, would you tell the global population, knowing that there's nothing that you can do about it, would you tell them or would you just carry on and not say anything? And would you believe the majority of people I've asked that question to have all said, I wouldn't say anything because there's nothing I can do anyway? Of, of course. And, uh, you know, first off, I got into this, uh, this, this particularly the, uh, uh, looking into Nibiru, uh, and the Planet X. I, I got into this about three years ago, not looking for that. I had nothing to do with that. I knew a little bit about it, just like everybody else, like yourself. I had heard some of it and I heard good stories and bad stories and, and of course, you know, instantly it's something that you have to be cautious about. And in my case, I'd been a, a highly respected investigative researcher. I was a guy that, that the senators and the congressmen, the good ones, and there are not a lot of them, 
but the honest ones were contacting me over the last 30 years. And they would say, Bob, we're looking into this. We're looking into this criminal case. We're looking into um, money that's been defrauded here, or we think there's something connected with drugs and arms and what have you, because that's what I had become an expert in. And so many of them were interrelated. It would be two fellows from one group and three guys from another. They would get together and carry out another fraudulent activity relative to defense weapons. And we're talking billions and millions of dollars with these contracts. And and if you don't watch them, uh, plus the fact that they can always stamp a big top secret rubber stamp on stuff, and you can't even go anyplace with it. Once it's classified, uh, you know, they just, the, the courts won't even look at it. They say, oh, we can't touch that. That's a classified material, you know, so go away. And if you said, well, hey, uh, we have big drug operations with the drugs being landed at our Air Force bases and weapons going out on one aircraft and drugs coming back to the United States on the same plane, and I can prove it, and then they say, but it's a CIA operation. It's top secret, so you can't go anyplace. So I was exactly the same frame of mind that most people that had a half of a brain and some common sense, and that is when you talk about Nibiru or some kind of a thing that's going to come back around on a a 3,000-year orbit or something of that sort, uh, my thought was, uh, you know, I I don't want to have anything to do with that, and I wasn't. My pursuit was the fact that uh, in the day before the 9-11 problem here in the United States, which was disastrous, the head of the Defense Department, Ronald Donald Rumsfeld, came forward and he made an announcement to the Congress in a press conference, I believe, that the Defense Department had lost $2.3 trillion dollars had misplaced it over a period of time. That was what the total amount was. And I almost fell off my chair. I thought, wow, wait a minute. Now, these guys steal millions of dollars any time they can. They're always carrying out some kind of a fraudulent thing. I mean, they they steal four, six million dollars just to build themselves a second house in Tahiti. You know, but I'm used to that. But when you get talking about multi-billions and trillions with a T being admitted by the Defense Department, head of the Defense Department, coincidentally, the day before the 9-11. So, boom, we never heard any more about that. It kind of vanished. You know, that just disappeared. There wasn't any news in America at all about anything for uh, for 90 days or six months after the 9-11. You didn't get anybody looking at the what the uh, Rumsfeld was talking about. And then, a short time later, they're doing an interview with the lady that's in charge of uh, uh, overseeing the uh, international funding, et cetera, with the Federal Reserve, which, by the way, I want everybody to know, in case you're not aware of that, I'm sure your listeners are, the Federal Reserve in the United States has nothing to do with the United States government, It is not a government division of the government. It is a group of bankers that many years ago created the Federal Reserve to supply money to the United States government. Basically, it lends it to them. It's got nothing. That's an interesting thing because a lot of people, Federal Reserve, they automatically, it's part of the government. So what happened, this lady comes forward from the, during an investigation and inquiry, and she said, uh, somebody asked her, a congressman, said, uh, we understand $9 trillion has gone off the books at the Federal Reserve and that there's a, seems to be, nobody seems to know where that money went to. She responded by saying, oh, I heard something about that. Now, she's supposed to be the one that's in charge of keeping the audit, so to speak. She said, I will have to look into that, but uh, I do know what you're talking about, and it appears that some money went to banks in Europe, and we're not sure where that went to. Well, 
at that point in time, along with many other things, I said, I've got to look into this. What are they talking about? Because you can't money launder. You can't launder a trillion dollars, for crying out loud. You know, if you even took many billions at a short period of time and tried to money launder it, if you were the biggest drug smuggler on earth, you couldn't money launder that kind of money. So what are we talking about? Did it disappear? Then, of course, I have uh, my friend uh, Ron Paul, a uh, congressman who, uh, as senator, uh, he came forward and he said to the Federal Reserve, uh, we understand that there's no money left in Fort Knox. The gold is gone from Fort Knox. And he said, we want to have, the Congress and the Senate must have an audit of the gold and prove to us that the gold is still there. There are too many stories of banging around that the gold is gone from Fort Knox. And, of course, I, when I say gone, you have to say there's um, 90% of it's gone. That's good enough. Uh, there's always some uh, gold bullion available that you could always open up a single door and show somebody a handful of gold, but that, that doesn't get it. Now, they told him, they told him, this is the uh, Federal Reserve, they told the Senator and the Congress to go away, you have no right to even look or ask for an audit. Get out of our face. That was the response. So, to go along with that was a period of time, now we're talking approximately uh, uh, 2008, 2010, when the money crashed all over the world. Yeah. The Germans, con con uh, the country of Germany, came forward and they said, we have over a thousand tons of gold on deposit at the Federal Reserve. We need it back. We need some of it back to stabilize our own banks. The Federal Reserve told the government of Germany to go away until 2020 because you cannot get even a good audit before 2020. So how does this tie into then, Planet X? Okay, well, this okay. is the point. Okay. So I'm still looking. So the bottom line is we have this horrendous amounts of money vanishing. Then I find out we have changes in the entire space programs, radical changes in the United States and worldwide, altering around in different directions. And then I'm, I'm snooping, I'm doing some serious inquiry, which includes tracking down these countries that are saying, hey, you know, they told us to take a hike. We don't even know. We think the gold is gone, uh, which included the head of, of the International Monetary Fund, who started forcing them. He was going to force the Federal Reserve, the United States government, Federal Reserve organization, to audit, or he was going to go forward to the floor of the United Nations and start pointing fingers to the theft of all of the gold from Fort Knox. Well, those people that will remember, that was the gentleman, I um, can't think of who he is from France, I don't have his name off the top of my head. He's the guy that they charged with this crazy sexual thing in New York City, yanked him off of his own private plane, before he left the United States, charged him with uh, chasing a maid around the bedroom in his uh, $2,000 a day hotel room for sexual um, uh, prowess stuff, chasing after a, a maid, and they literally pulled him off his plane and they were going to arrest him and charge him. End of story is he shut up his mouth, they let him go, he came back to Switzerland or France, wherever he was going, um, and it was no longer the head of the IMF and uh, is a, threw him in the trash. But what they did there, you see, was they shut him up because he was a powerful person in the world that was about to expose where the money went from the United States, where the gold went, where all this funding had been going. And uh, it, it, what it has been going into has been underground facilities in the United States of America and in other parts of the world. 
being funded partially by the U.S. as well. In other words, financial assistance to other parts of the parts of the world to develop underground hideout survival facilities. We have a hundred and three of them in the United States. They are mostly finished. Some of there are a variety of configurations. They are gigantic, the size of entire cities, if you will, underground. Some of them can hold as many as 20,000 people, and many of them a little bit lesser numbers. But there are 103 of them, and they are with railroads underneath underground and with highways underground big enough for 18-wheeler, 40-foot trucks to have to stop at intersections to let each other pass by. That's how big these are. That's where the money's gone. And we're not talking a few bucks. See, these are unbelievable facilities, and including the what used to be the old NORAD facility, yeah, which is into the side of a granite mountain in, uh, I think it's Wyoming, uh, in Cheyenne, the, the Cheyenne Mountain. They literally have uh, developed 103 of these underground facilities. They've taken the NORAD facility, and they... Are you still with me? Yeah, we seem to... You, just a little okay, bit I'm, dropping I'm out getting there. a beep. Okay, okay. Uh, let's forget, forget about that. The um, uh, NORAD facility, now that was that... The, been there for many years. It's an extensive underground protected facility with the capabilities of uh, years of survival, uh, even built to handle atomic explosions within a half a mile of it and all that baloney. That's been changed. They pulled all of the NORAD protective electronics out of there. That's where they used to watch for Russian possible missiles and things of that sort. That's all gone. That's been converted un- again into one of these hideout underground survival locations. So now I got to the point where, okay, I can see where the money went. The gold, gold cost factor, the, the vanishing of uh, funding over 30 years progressively every single week of the year for the last 30 years or so has been sliding money out the back door and down into construction of these facilities. They have filled these facilities with billions of dollars of survival foods and equipment. They are totally self-sufficient underground facilities. Now, when I started doing some additional snooping in different directions, somebody said, because I said, we're not, you know, we're not prevent. We're not. It's not a nuclear thing. What, what, what the heck is going on? Why would they? Why would these guys who have been stealing for their own pockets for many, many years and pushing for world government for many years now, very legitimately chasing after this? This is a real. This one world government is very serious and real. All right, they've been trying to do this. All of a sudden, they slammed on the brakes, they back off on that, and they're moving forward underground, building these facilities. They have supplied all of the sheriffs and police departments with millions and millions of rounds or, or of, of weapons, full of automatics, grenade launchers, military troop carriers, Water cannons, which we don't have too many of here. They do in Europe, but we don't have many of that over here at the local police. What they've been doing now also is filling people, uh, the, the sheriffs and police departments, with high-tech, first-class military weapons and training. All right? Now, there's a reason for that also. The reason for that, putting in simple terms, because we don't have a lot of time today, is the fact that, like you said, <clears throat> once the people find out that something is coming in extraterrestrial that's relative to causing a celestial calamity on the entire globe, the elitists are going to go 
down underground, a limited number of people. The rest of us are going to be stuck up on the surface, and the riot control will be partially military, and the rest of it will be the militarized sheriff and police of the local policing areas. They are going to be doing the riot control. The obvious point and the answer is when we talk about the possibility of anybody ever announcing this and saying, oh, listen, attention, everybody of the world, if you see the new star in the sky, if you see a new star headed in in December, um, that's going to be a big planet that's going to come zipping back around which it has done several times previously in history of the globe, has going to zip around, go around the sun and go back out, and it's going to cause Noah's floods all over again. It's going to cause earthquakes. It's going to cause volcanic activity. And all of these types of interruptions all, along, all the way around the globe, they can never, ever make that announcement. So what the intention is that we will have martial law. Now I'm referring, of course, to the United States and other nations will follow, I'm sure, in the same direction. They will have to have martial law in effect six to four months before the general, I'm going to call them the amateur astronomers, potentially start to pick up on the fact that there is something seriously coming back into our immediate area with the potential to cross close to the earth and then back out again. Now, I, it, it, to, for myself to come to all of those con conclusions now, I spent three years working on this, and I was like anybody, like I said earlier, anybody with a common sense, I wouldn't just jump into this thing with some screwball over here that told me that... Uh, that there was a planet going to come back and zip around. When I got looking into it and came across some of the people that had done extraordinary studies on this for years and years, uh, I have been totally convinced the, the, the bottom line that uh, this will be returning. There is two, two thought factors on this, and actually both of them agree that it's it's uh, not going to be too far away before this comes back into uh, passing close to the to go around the sun and then back out like a comet like these like Halley's comet does they do it every 75 years there's another one called the hale bopp comet that was only discovered in the 70s and it came around and went back out and they didn't even know about it until a couple of years before it came through now, when they did the studies on the hale bopp comet, and by the way, everybody can look this stuff up on a computer, the hale bopp comet was a 4,200-year orbit. See, now, when I first heard that the planet X Nibiru was probably on a 3,600-year orbit, I thought, without being a, a, an astronomer, uh, but I thought... Uh, uh, you know, that sounds, that does sound goofy to me. That really sounded far out. Uh, the idea that a planet five times the size of Earth dragging about four moons of its own with it is coming around on a, a 3,600 year orbit. I thought that was ridiculous. But then, you know, lo and behold, by just doing some simple, uh, uh investigating, I find out, and then of course I had, you know, scientists back it up and all of that, that in fact, uh, the hale bopp was 4,200 year orbit, and that it will be back in 4,200 years. Uh, it came through, I think it was in like 1975, something like that. Uh, and by the way, the size, the size of the tail being dragged behind, let's say like the um, Halley's Comet, is 24 million miles of junk coming around behind it. Now, some of the best studies 
on uh, the the research which has taken him a half of a lifetime, so to speak, is done by a fellow named Gil Broussard. And uh, he went and discovered that there literally have been a, a very well done uh, scholarly research going back 2,000 years on the, um, uh, the, the passing of Nibiru. In other words, the, the Chinese astronomers, for example, literally tracked it in the year 10,050. They tracked it coming in day by day by day from the outer, uh, outer rim of our, our solar system and, and watched it and, and marked it and, and actually put it into their, uh, scribed it into their scriptures back 10,000, or excuse me, one, uh, in the year 1050. Uh, there are descriptions of Nibiru and the reaction that it has on Earth in every possible ancient scripture that's ever been written. It's not just some one or two people that have made uh, note of this giant event which came in and constituted um, uh, blocking the sun, did a solar eclipse during a given period of time. It's not just one or two idiots out here. This is in, it's in the Bible. It's called the Wormwood. It's totally described in the Bible. It's totally described in um, uh, every other, they had the, the Sumerian clay tablets that had been researched. They were 4,000 year old clay tablets and they completely describe the, the entire action of this uh, returning star. The Chinese called it the, the uh, visiting star uh, and the flaming dragon. All of the, and again, some people don't believe at all, for example, in, in any of Nostradamus' stuff, and Mother Shipton, who was an English uh, prophet. But all of these prophets, the ones that I would say draw good attention because they've been accurate so many times on so many events, um, all of them talk about the Biru. They may call it something else. There's a multitude of names that have been hung on this thing. But again, we have to get back to basics in, in corrupted United States government. And that is, these guys have gone in, they built 103 underground facilities, they mutually gotten together with other nations, and they built a thing called the Seed Bank, which is in Denmark, I believe, um, uh, near near in that that area. It's on an island. That's right. It's yeah. into the side of a granite mountain. Mm. Has all of the seeds to replant the globe with growing seed uh, seedlings of every plant on the earth that they've been able to get. Now that's a gigantic facilities with with millions and millions of seeds to regenerate the planet Earth after it's been washed over with Noah's floods. Okay, can uh, I can I just add something to sure. that? Now Bob? let me stop and you go ahead and ask <clears throat> questions if you will. Yeah, that's okay. I'll just give you a little bit of a break. Um also just to add to what you said about the seed bank, Russia have built about five thousand bunkers. Uh, for, yes, its, for its people. And China has built cities that nobody's in, the size of New York, away from the coast, as if they're expecting something where there's going to be a mass exodus of people moving from the coast to inland and to move into these cities. Now, last year Absolutely. on... Yeah, the last year on OIM, we, see, we seen something in the newspaper, in the independent newspaper, um, that said that the Irish government were doing continuity of government testing between our uh, government buildings and Dublin Castle, which is reinforced. And all our Irish listeners will know about that, these buildings. And they were, do, they were doing testing of uh, continuity of government. Now also, you know, I believe the Irish war to fiasco, which we'll be talking about later on, is not just about keeping your, um, t- taking our water and privatising it, but it's also they're keeping our mind and keeping our focus of what's going on. Now, I've said it before in the show, 
that they want to bring in martial law. They have to bring it in before this hits. And we have seen an increase of violence and disregard from our own police force, which is the Gardaí, over here in Ireland. It just seems that they're told to do anything they want to the people and you, nothing will, you know, nothing will be, uh, will come of it. Any reports of, um, misconduct will be just ignored. I do believe that they are trying to push the people in a way to bring in martial law because they need to have that in. And that's what you said earlier on. And I think in the States, that's what they're trying to, trying to do. And also just to add as well to the credence of this information, there has been an awful lot of uh, astronomers um, killed in the last few years. And obviously astronomers who know about what's going to happen. Yes, and, 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 and several other, there's been, here's their, here's the situation with the, um, uh, the mindset of those that have the capability to keep these things secret. You know, a lot of people say, oh, they couldn't keep it secret, and blah, 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 you know. Okay, well, uh, the, the secrecy, uh, you have to remember, they built the atomic bomb in the United States, for like five years, four years, they worked on this bomb. A hundred thousand people were working on this bomb because they were in, they were all over the United States. In other words, a group here, a group there, a group there. None of them knew what they were doing even. They, they, they kept it completely isolated and insulated from each other so that nobody, with an exception of a handful of people, even knew the bomb existed. The vice president of the United States at that time did not know it existed when they were building it. See, so the idea of, of uh, well, whether they could ever keep it secret, yes, they can do it, period, end of story. They have the ability to do that. Uh, and, and again, it's, they're dealing with our money. I mean, they got all the money in the world at their hands. And now, like I say, I got looking into this because it was all gone. You know, and where in the world could you put all that money? And there's only one place, and that's to what they've been doing. Now, in terms of supplying the um, uh, the police with these weapons, uh, military weapons, uh, including drones and all of that as well, by the way, uh, all of these things in the United States are all over uh, the police forces. And what they simply do with these police forces, they contact them and they say, hey, we have two and a half million rounds of ammunition and 1,500 machine guns, and we have uh, grenade launchers, and we have some uh, troop carriers, and the way things are going right now, would you guys like to have some of that for your share for your police department? Well, of course, these guys at that lo lower level of the policing they love that stuff. I mean, they say, wow, yeah, get us a couple of those trucks and get us one of those troop carriers and armored car. And, and you mean we can get machine guns with and, and grenade launchers and all that stuff? And they say yes. And they say, by the way, we'll help you finance it. We'll write this stuff that's coming back from all of the wars that we've been fighting for years and years in the desert and every other place. We're going to write off this stuff and we're going to give it to you guys for almost nothing. We'll help you finance it. But all you, because most cases, the small sheriff and police, they can't afford this stuff, see, out of their budget. So the, the, the criminal higher level of government says, we'll supply it. Now all you have to do in the future now, if we have need for your assistance under the declaration of a martial law, or a riot control and things of that sort, you're going to have to sign a little thing that says you will come on board with us. And, of course, the sheriff and, the, you know, the police, the local guys, and they may just say, hey, sure, what are we going to sign? This is going to be great. Let's go set up a, a target practice for our new uh, grenade launchers, you know. Yeah. So they love it, and they're easily conned because the government is just uh, whatever. That's their That's their business. And they do very well. Right, something now, I just want to add, add to that, Bob. Yes. Just, yes. Just, just, we, we're going to go off to questions in a few minutes. We have our listeners on the chat facility, and there's a number of questions there, which we're going to go over to Steve in a minute. But one thing I just want to clarify for, um, which is a main question. Well, two main questions will be, you know, um, the secrecy of this 
and obviously what can we do about it but I just want to approach the part, that part now we've said it before on the show the, the, the powers to be have been telling us about this for a long time they have been using Hollywood to tell us that's why we have the likes of the 2012 movies we have Deep Impact and all these movies and various other things that have been brought out because in their kind of warped sense of um, morality they, they have to tell us and it's you know, and we have to consent to it, and it's all about consent. So they're, what they're saying is, well, we're going to tell you what's going to happen because we have to do that, but it's up to you to get it. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't get it. So there's movies out there, like as I say, Deep Impact 2012, and there's loads of information out there. Do you, you had the um, the French ambassador and John Kerry, the Secretary of State coming out saying about <coughs> excuse me 500 days to avoid climate chaos and that was in may 2014 which points to september 2015 which is 500 days so and by the way i want to make a very specific point relative to that when you're done now go ahead finish up so yeah Please. so i was just going go to say they are kind of they are telling us they are giving us the information out there it is being drip fed to us but it's up to us to get it and look for the information. And unfortunately, a lot of people make their own opinion based on no research. Or you don't see it or you don't pick it up. And then this is why some people go, oh, it's all a woo-woo conspiracy theory thing. Because they don't do the research. So, I don't know. Over to you, Bob. That's, and, and, and that's absolutely the truth. Plus, see, there's a... Uh, and and you have to do you have to do the research. And I'm going to say this. This is going to this is a, uh, I want everybody to grab a pencil and a paper or whatever right now. But um, um, my website, which is Bob Fletcher Investigations dot com, it's Bob Fletcher Investigations dot com. You can get a copy of my double DVD. It's two DVDs. It's four hours. Extraordinarily tedious, so to speak. But the only way I could do this so that everybody would see the whole connection of all the connecting the points, and I literally cover everything and every question you might bring to mind. We have covered it in there. I have live footage of the underground facilities. I have photographs of it. I have the financial information. I have the history, the stories of people that have died, that, like you mentioned, that were working on this project and had been eliminated. And the problem that the government has is uh, if they find somebody at a high level that can be recognized as believable, if they can, if they get real close and they think that this person's going to shoot their mouth off, they're going to die. And we've lost central intelligence chiefs, CIA heads, and uh, reporters that were literally on their way to making, uh, making a uh, final report on this stuff that were blown up in their cars. We have missing and uh, unusual things like Princess Diana. Now, you have to remember something. Uh, this got seriously cranked up about 1983 when Ronald Reagan was just before the Iran-Contra mess, okay? The Contra, on the floor of the Contra investigations in 87, uh, Oliver North, who was a key character in the middle of that mess, which, is, by the way, it was drug smuggling like you wouldn't believe, and, and murders and every other thing it was like the Kennedy killing. There was hundreds of people killed to keep them quiet on this uh, that particular program. But the deal was right at that point in 1987 on the floor of the Congress, a con congressional a friend of mine actually, so to speak, uh, I had asked Oliver North, what was the deal about continuity of government that had just been turned around in the last couple of years? Now, that would have been 85, 83, that period of time. He said, what is it that... It has been planned to suspend the Constitution of the United States when necessary and expand these facilities for the continuity of government maintaining specific people to be hidden away. What is that all about? And when he said that, the gavel was banged down on the desk. They told him to shut up and to say no more, 
and that we are going to go into a break right now, a security break behind closed doors, and we will answer the rest of those questions. You are not to talk about it. It's top secret. So that's the reason I'm talking about it. Number one, it uses the wording that you used for Ireland, the continuity of government. That's a good, that's a wonderful terminology. I call it continuity of those that can steal. Anyhow, it's continuity of government. It was the time frame, 83 to 85, and people back then were starting to get bumped off, for the less lack of a better terminology, at the very high levels. The head of the CIA at that time, Bill Casey, was scheduled to go before the Senate and the Congress. I had a friend who literally worked for Bill Casey, literally in his offices and wrote his speeches. And I was told that um, Bill Casey had said something in the office about, I'm going to get it all above board. I'm going to tell them what I know is going on. He was, he was, uh, he had a stroke the next morning having his first cup of coffee and he never came out of the hospital alive. End of story. And they gave him a lobotomy so he couldn't talk the first 20 minutes that he arrived at the hospital. So this is the kind of stuff that's been going on in terms of keeping the secrets. And I had several other friends. And by the way, all of this is in, included in my uh, DVD. The DVDs it, on this subject that I have completed is the greatest stuff that I've ever accomplished in my life. And the only place you can get it is by going on my uh, website. Now, let, and by the way, I have to say this. We did, I did one particular program uh, in December on this, and it was rather well-covered program, an, an interview. And to give you an idea of whether people are interested in this or not, we had 180,000 hits in the month of December wow. on my website. That's incredible. 180,000. My site went down twice trying to keep up with it. That's so um, people certainly are interested. They're pulling their heads out of what we call a rectal recluse, and they're understanding that there is something very seriously wrong with the vanishing them. Oh, and by the way, uh, the, the Pope, all right, uh, a few years ago, they built from the um, uh, Vatican. The Vatican built an infrared telescope and put it in Arizona, United States, with the cooperation of the United States government. It is an infrared telescope, which is the only means by which, at this point in time, you could, in fact, possibly get pictures or what have you of Nibiru headed back in. And I believe that's uh, and another, I believe the telescope is called Lucifer. Yes, it's been called Lucifer, which of course is raised an awful lot of eyebrows yeah. as well. Um uh, you know, like uh, <laughs> what what is that, you know, Lucifer. Yeah. Uh and then of course, as you said, talking about trying sort of prepping people, if if you have not if you I'm talking to the listeners, if you have not seen the motion, the motion picture is called 2012, was actually produced in 2010. It is, unfortunately, I'm going to say, rather close to the reality of what we're talking about with, uh, with the planet, returning planet of Nibiru passing close to the Earth. I think it is more closely accurate than you would ever want to really admit to. Um, and you're correct. They are leaking out, well, I say leaking out, they are doing an unbelievable amount of uh, motion pictures that point in the direction of something strange on its way in. Now, unknown to many people, our CDC, the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta, ordered up over a half a million coffins about two years ago. They have been delivered already delivered to holding areas in a couple of different places. I have photographs of these. These are constructed specifically for cremation of bodies 
and they will hold as many as four individual bodies in these large, burnable, patented. They're patented with a special material to not put out too much smoke when they cremate bodies inside of these coffins. That's right. And they've already been ordered and delivered. We've seen them you know, on them. This is the Alex Jones, uh, Alex Jones and Jesse Ventura did a show and they were showing the actual coffins yes, there. Yes, they, 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 that's correct. They have done on uh, some, some reports on that as well. Um, and by the way, I have to also repeat, I do have uh, probably some of the best uh, under underground facility uh, footage and photographs um, uh, put together uh, in in our DVD that we have now. And and by the way, I, I have to do this because I'm not uh, technically I, I'm not sure where we are with this. Our DVDs are manufactured for the United States standard playing format. Uh, so I want anybody that wants to get our DVD. Uh, be sure that the equipment that you have there in, in your area, uh, in Ireland, et cetera, in, uh, that, that it will play on the American format. That's all I want to say that. I, I don't want somebody to get it and end up not being able to, to watch the darn thing. I'm sure we'll okay. be able to start yeah. something now. Just, uh, now I'm, I'm very conscious of time and we do have a lot of questions come in, but one thing that yes. I mentioned earlier in the show was that we had uh, Alfred Weber on the show and he said that, um, the Planet X was coming in up to 2012, but the timeline had changed in December 21st, 2012. And that's not going to happen now because of the timeline change. What's your take on that? Uh, well, the bottom line is the people that I've, I think you put it this way, the scientists and, and the astronomers and the, uh, uh, the multitude of, uh, historic researchers, et cetera, that I've dealt with. I spent three years on this. I've never done something so huge in my life. To, and again, it's try to keep it right and to not make this, you know, never, never land kind of stuff and to really keep it right. These people, uh, I, here's what spooked me. One of the highly, the most highly respected uh, researchers and scientists, astronomers in this, uh, that, that, that I've become reasonably close with, uh, really spooked me a few, uh, gosh, I guess it's about four months ago. Um, uh, we, the, here's the, the, um, the final direction in terms, everyone wants to know when is this going to come, all right? And basically here's the best that can be done. Uh, and I, I really believe in these few people that I've been dealing with, these, these groups, because they're, they've spent a half a lifetime studying this stuff. Okay, according to all of the research of the previous passes of the Nibiru planet was that it is seen in December, and then January, its first scene would appear as a new star in the sky, and then December, January, February, it would be approaching and getting larger. And then March and April is the period of time in history where it has always passed closest to Earth is March and April. So the feeling for the most part is, and the most likely figure now, is that it, it may be seen this next this December of 2015 would be the earliest of time, and by March going into, that would be 2016, all right, that it would pass close. If it does not happen at that time, then the next, but they seem to say least likely uh, or, or, or less likely, put it that way, would be the next Christmas, the, ne the next December, January, February, March, all right? So the feeling is that the most likely is being seen this next December. If it is not, then it may be the following year, but again, seen in December and passing close March and April after the first of its um, sightings. Now, again, martial law. How are they going to do martial law? Uh, I literally have government papers that go back many years that say 
when they're moving in something where it may be the declaration of the martial law, that it must be a frightening enough serious event to convince the people to go along with the martial law. In other words, it has to be life-threatening, and that's literally their terminology. Uh, that All right, so here's what we were looking at, and that is the potential of something. And by the way, now you remember I was doing this in the middle of it a year and a half ago before the Ebola became a possible world threat. The disease of Ebola or something like that would work for martial law. The possibility of, obviously, a serious war between the United States and Russia pending pending a bunch of crazy military activities, that would also work, and that also is now on the table because of all the crazy stuff that they've been Russians have been doing, moving into uh, uh, you know taking over um, in in different parts of um, uh, the 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 old bordering Russia, etc. So they've been doing all of that and doing threatening. Also, we have the Korean thing with North Korea threatening the possibility, and then last but not really on the list, and maybe first um, last here in my list is just. Uh, serious terrorism, chemical, biological, or other types of very radical terrorism on the grounds of the United States of America, which again, now we're seeing that all over the place. We saw it in France, right? There are all this activity now. Uh, that may give France a good reason to find here to do their martial law. We have it over here where they're always threatening us on the news of, you know, there's concern about another 9-11, you know, and if it takes place, if there's a radical terrorist event in four states or something of that sort simultaneously in the United States, uh, that will qualify, and the Americans will absolutely say, oh, good, thank goodness, they're bringing uh, martial law in to protect my babies. <clears throat> All right, so it's got to be something like that, and in, and if it happens, it will. We're probably talking six to four months ahead of December. You follow me? Yeah. So that if this if this visual thing is supposed to be in December, we're talking four five months because they're going to want to have a little bit of time to work out the bugs on martial law and get the uh, the precious elite who have their invitations to the underground facilities probably already in their hands. Well, I want to, but, I just uh, want to add to, I just want to say to the Irish listeners that uh, just be aware of this martial law thing, especially with the Irish water as an excuse or something. I, I believe that that's what they want. They want people to be so irate that they have to bring in curfews and go, oh, well, we have to do that because people start getting a bit rowdy about and things were started to happen. But I'll tell you what, Bob, we have to go over to questions because we only have about 30 minutes left. And I want to, uh, we want to quick fire the questions over to you. And we want to try and get through as many as we can. So um, if, if, if we can keep the answers short, if possible, yes, sir. Then, then we'll be able to get through more questions. So, Steve, I'll pass it over to you. Yeah, Bob, a lot, of it, a lot of interest on the chat room in relation to the information that you're sharing with us this evening, or, well, today, this morning, uh, your time. Uh, on both chat rooms, uh, it stored stored up a lot of a lot of questions. Uh, I'm just going to kick off. And I'm not going to read them in any particular order. But the first one come in. Well, the the first one I have here on the list is from Mr. T, uh, not Mr. T from the A team, but Mr. T. He's wondering did did Nibiru cause the Great Flood twelve thousand years ago? Would that, would that be possible? Uh, yes. <clears throat> yeah. The feeling. The the the. And again, I'm sticking mostly to guys that really have studied this in total depth. I mean, they can tell you, they can give you dates back that far. I mean, it's outrageous because they've gone into all of these manuscripts. All right. The answer to that is yes. Uh, it would have also, it would have been Noah's floods would have been, uh, uh Nibiru. Okay, so that's that's definitely a yes. So, um, next question is from another uh, another Bob. This is uh, Bob 
uh, on the in the OAM chat room. He's wondering how many known comets have hit the Earth belonging to Planet X so far. Uh, I, I, uh, give that to me again. How many? Say that again. He's just wondering if any of the comets, the preceding comets from Nibiru, have hit uh, Earth thus far. Oh, oh well, uh, yes. In terms of, uh, let, let me say this: a really important. Answer. Unfortunately, it's not going to be a real short answer, but I'll try to do it short. Uh, something that uh, is important: all of the planets in our entire solar system have been heating up changing in their chemistry on the exterior parts of the, chemi- uh, the, the planets and even wiggling in their orbits to varying degrees, starting way far out by, by Pluto. All right? M- my belief and the belief of the people that have really studied this even more in depth than myself is that uh, it's also moving like a, uh, it, it's doing like a bowling ball effect. When it started on its trip back inward, way, way, way far out, all right? It's crashing through what's called the Oort cloud, which is uh, trillions of small pieces of space debris, and we have now seen uh, more comets and meteors and uh, uh, activity of that sort in the last six months than we have in years, and we've had more crazy activity on our solar uh, activities, solar flares and what have you, also in this last couple of years. And I believe even dead whales, fish, and birds are also being affected. And it's a, a multitude of things. It's, it's gravity, it's other, uh, other planetary movement causing activity on other planets. Yes, uh, that, that's the best I can say. I can't give you a specific, but I also want to make out a point. People say, why can't we see it? We never saw that comet that came zipping in over Russia and blew up in the atmosphere, it was not seen by anyone at all. And when NASA was asked about it, they said, if it's coming from the direction of the sun, we're not going to see it. Yeah, we've actually heard that before. And, and I was actually going to ask you about the, the one in Russia. Uh, but yeah, we, we actually did, we did have some questions then earlier on. Uh, people asking, why can we not see it? Now, we, we heard before that you can actually see it, but it depends where on the on the Earth you are. I mean, I don't know if it's maybe the, the southern hemisphere or the equator, but there there are pictures that have come up. I'm sure you, I'm sure you're well aware of them, where you can actually see the 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 the, the other planet just kind of beside the sun. And, but right. I know it's not available. It's not there all the time, though. You can't see it all the time. The, well, the the best anything at this point in time. Here's the general belief that people that are into this. Uh, the, the general belief is that, uh, it, because it doesn't give off its own light, and, and at this point in time, you almost have to have an infrared telescopic camera to, to be able to see it or have, uh, a, 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 we, we have an awful lot of top secret, uh, space, uh, uh, satellites, if you will, with telescopes, et cetera, out there at this time, keeping track of it. But those, for the most part, are not available to us. But even on my website, if you just go on, I have a startling picture, a couple of pictures on there that are really excellent. One is that was taken that shows it was through a, a telescope, um, uh, that, where they an infrared scope where they could take pictures. And Google Google Space, someone had given out the identification location marks, our latitude, longitudes in space, to where you could see it. This is going back about one year ago now, I guess. And the following day, when they posted those sites up there where you could see it, uh, Google Earth put a huge 4 by 5 kind of a black square that blacked out the entire vis- visible parts of the planet. So they actually blocked it at the request, I'm sure, of our government. Google Earth blocked it off. And I have both of those photos are up on my uh, website, uh, which you can see. Uh, anyhow, let's go on to another question. Yeah, just in relation to that, that that little black square, I do remember actually we were we were given information. Well, I think it was common knowledge on the internet, and we actually seen that, and we were kind of scratching our heads, going, "Yeah, why would they cover up? Or maybe that's all that's there. Maybe it's not a black hole, but it's a black square." 
But uh, yeah, okay, we'll we, we'll continue on with the questions. Um, sure. This this one is kind of a little bit off topic, but I'll ask you anyway. It's 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 from it's from Mick, uh, one of one of our long term listeners. Mick is wondering uh, again. It's off topic, but what's what's your opinion? of the the debacle that's kind of taking place in France at the moment. Do you reckon it's genuine or do you reckon it could be a false flag? Are you are you are you talking are you talking about the 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 reaction of the people or the events taking place? The events, the the, the initial event. Yeah I I don't know. You know it, uh, I've been into this for so long uh and and I have seen and witnessed and was and aware of false flags uh, so profusely used by all the governments of the of the world, unfortunately. Uh, I don't have a good opinion. I've got to be honest with you. I think my personal opinion, and I'm going to be a little bit blunt, that we just had uh, you know a, a couple of screwballs, and that we're going to have guys like this uh, that are going to come out from under the woodwork uh, like crazy, and and we don't know if they are radicals from the east or if they are planted by corrupted governments including our my own here in the united states government uh the 9 11 event was fraudulent my belief 150 percent at this point in time is that the 9 11 was carried out by the united states government and i'm talking not the government all obviously but the highest, most corrupted persons, the same as those that eliminated John F. Kennedy. I, uh, as a matter of fact, I crossed paths with many of the people that, that had been involved with that. I mean, Nixon and Johnson, both former presidents, well, of course, uh, Johnson was uh, the inheritor of Kennedy, Kennedy's seat. Both of them were directly involved with the killing of Kennedy. Okay. But anyhow, okay. we don't yeah. get into that. That's separate. That, that's a different we, subject. It's yeah. very difficult to label something as real or false flag because uh, it's just it's just really hard because they do a good job of covering them. Oh, they do. Um, where are we now? Uh, and you, you spoke earlier about satellites, and just uh, I'm just wondering myself. I actually watched a documentary last week. Um, it was a guest we had on. We we re- done some research on some of the links found on her website, Joanne Kramer, and there was some information in relation to satellites. She said, "Well, sorry, no, she didn't say it, but someone else said that satellites are not real. They do not exist, and if they were up there in space, they will be burned up because the temperatures will be so high." I don't know whether whether they do or whether they do not exist, but if if and when Nibiru does come in, I'm guessing that will also have an effect on those satellites. Would would they would it be any well, chance they uh, might yeah. drop out of the sky? Yeah, and yeah it, that, that's true. See, here's the the uh, the effects. There's multiple effects that take place with this um, uh, when when it rolls back around again. Um, okay, uh, one is uh, the gravitational thing. It literally, apparently, and it's just great documentation on this, uh, the, the last time, or one of the last times that it passed by, at least the last time, I guess, uh, and I'm saying that because there are two thoughts. One is that it's a 3,600 year, the elongated uh, extraordinary orbit, or that, it, that it's only 360 years, which would have meant that, in fact, it had passed 10 times within 3,600 years with varying effects on the Earth. Uh, now, and this is geologists that have studied the dirt and the ground and the ice, drilling holes in the ice and measuring changes in growth patterns and all of those things, all right? Um, but the... Um, um, I lost my uh, my direction here. Uh, son of a gun. I'm sorry. What, um, what, what was, what was your, what was the question from the lady? Oh, it's only about the satellites. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the satellite, of course there are satellites. And of course the, the other point, and it's, and it's where the sun, if you were close to the sun, if you go close to the sun, it's going to burn up. If we get close to the sun by only a few hundred thousand miles, we will burn up. We're just lucky that we're in the, the, the sweet zone, so to speak. Not too hot, not too cold, and we're revolving, so we have the seasonal thing. 
all right? But the point being, uh, of course, our satellites. The satellites are very cold, by the way, if we're talking about going away from the sun. It's not a matter of uh, things burning up. The farther they get away from the sun, the colder they get. The idea that we don't have satellites is, uh, is I think, nonsense with no disrespect to whoever that was. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I understand your point of view. It's just that the person who, who did say it, they said up there, uh, on it's, your, the satellites will be in the, ter- the thermosphere, and they reckoned it was between 200 and 600, I think it was 200 and 600, or maybe 600 and 2,000 degrees. But anyway, look, we won't get bogged down that. We, 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 we'll keep moving on. Okay. Well, you, oh, you, oh, and, and, and I'm sorry, I, I knew where I lost my thought uh, was we were talking about the effects you're going to have gravitational effects that, uh, again, this is five times the size of Earth. Uh, it blocked the sun out the last time it came around, did a solar eclipse from the view of uh, a German observatory, uh, which, by the way, uh, they had done a thing called the sky disk, which was people that actually witnessed the solar eclipse by this thing. And it was 3,600 some years ago when they did this disc that was discovered. It's made out of bronze and gold. It's highlighted in gold. And it's an entire, like a, a, a picture of the sky, if you will, a drawing of the sky done on a, a kind of like a, a, a plaque. It's about 12 inches across, and it's called the sky disc. And once it was properly interpreted, it apparently is interpreting the uh, solar, uh, the complete solar block out of the sun and uh, for a given period of time, et cetera, et cetera. The mathematics on the passing of this thing, uh, which has been done by uh, Gil Broussard, is phenomenal. Uh, he has it down to showing the angle the potential angle of us crossing the tail of this thing. So what's going to happen is going to go around the, the, around the sun when it comes in. It will go around the sun. We will pass through the tail, which will take approximately one hour for us to pass through the tail. Going through the tail of that thing is going to be meteor storms exactly like those in the Bible that killed all the troops in Israel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, when it passed through the tail uh, previously. And then it will go around behind the sun and go back out. We will then come around ourselves and go through the tail a second time. We're not going to be a collision or anything, but we will go through the tail a second time, and we will have, again, one hour of bombardment on the entire globe for the most part, mostly on, we'll say, the front side of the globe, wherever that is while, while we're revolving on our axis. But on this uh, particular sky disk that they discovered, which is like a drawing of the sky, it indicated that there was a full 26-degree tilt of the Earth on its axis when Nibiru passed closest. So it caused a, a gravitational type effect, uh, causing the Earth to actually tilt 26 degrees on the axis during the time it was closest to Earth. Bob, now go ahead. What's the, yes. what's the, what? We have a few minutes left. What's the solution for people? I mean, is there any kind of solution for people? Do you know of safe areas? I mean, we know Edgar Casey. You're talking about um, Mother Shipton and 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 prophecies. And prophets who, who, who prophesized this, Planet X, Edgar yeah. Casey being one of them. And there's certain maps out there like Ed, Edgar Casey's, George Michael Scallon's, Nancy Leader from Zeta Talk talks about this as well. And they have various maps. And the same, the safe areas. It's not complete world devastation, but there are safe areas. Yeah. What do you say, what's your solution to, for people? What, what would you say, tell them? Well, apparently, see, according to, uh, locations of where uh, the elite have stolen our money and built their own hideouts. Obviously, the uh, idea is away from the coastline uh, and uh, and elevated. If we have, um, if the worst 
problems is the flooding because of the gravitational effect of this giant mass moving closely, uh, so to speak, close to Earth. Uh, if the, uh, the Noah's floods comes, we will be looking at the bulk of the coastlines of all of the nations probably washed out um, with, um, uh, you know, just gigantic tsunamis uh, uh, that, that we couldn't even imagine and going in 40, 50 to, to even 100 miles inland, depending on how, on, on uh, many, many things. But that's one of the big deals is to be uh, not close to the coastline. Uh, the next thing, of course, would be high elevation, uh, the highest you could go. And um, uh, the problem is also, depending on how severe the destruction is, uh, I, I, I don't know whether, whether I, I, I don't know. Uh, and I have, see, I have family, uh, and most of them happen to be close to the coastline. And I've left it totally up to my, uh, my children to, uh, handle their, my grandchildren in the manner that they best see fit. Uh, I don't know what there's going to be for 50 to 100 years if this pass close like that. I think it really did the last time. I and I think it really uh, wiped out almost everything. And when people have to understand something, you ask about the uh, satellites. You know, everything in particularly in the United States, but it's global. Everything now depends on electricity and global communication. There will be none of that when this thing comes through. Number one, it's with all the junk and everything else that we're talking about, there will be no communication satellites probably left at all. I don't know how soon they will be wiped out because if we get huge solar flares from our sun as an effect of this, uh, which I think we're already getting, see, and it's like hardly even visible at this point in time, I think we're already getting reaction to that. that. I think that's even what's caused the weather. You know, weather in the United States is totally upside down today as we speak. You know, it's just crazy. It's freezing all the way down to the borders of uh, Florida. I mean, you know, it's just crazy, crazy. Uh, volcanoes, we have 47 volcanoes have started up in the last 90 days. 47 ongoing volcanoes back going, you know, the last few months. Earthquakes picking up a little bit. But the point is, I don't know what's going to be left for people. Uh, and there's something that I, that I do mention in my DVDs, and that is uh, in the United States, and, and I'm not, I don't know about over where you guys are. In the United States, we have 100, 130 uh, nuclear power plants. Now, we've seen what happened in Japan when they got washed out uh, with one of their, just one. We saw what happened at Chernobyl many years ago. That's, uh, that's still a desert. That'll be a desert for 100 years, for crying out loud. I mean, they're talking about stuff growing again, but you go in there, the, the, the radiation's so high, it, you know, you go move and live there for 90 days, you'll die. You know, you get sick and die. I don't think anybody's going to be doing that. Anyhow, uh, we have the nuclear power plants. When they get out of control and do a meltdown, uh, I mean, you know, God help us, I don't know. I would rather that, that you have me back on the air in a, let's say a year, let's say a year from now, uh, and, and we can make fun of me, that I'm the biggest jerk you ever interviewed. Well, put it this way. I would really... I would really like to be wrong on this one. Well, put it this way, Bob. We've said it on the show before. If Planet X is not going to happen and nothing happens, then the people don't have to worry about it. What's the panic? And if That's you do, true. if you do store food, and Planet X doesn't happen, you, it doesn't happen. You have extra food. It's you know. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, and, and the bottom line, I t- what I tell people first off, I tell them I'm never in a million years going to make any recommendations that 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 on on how people should live their lives. I make a suggestion, you know, high elevation and 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 away from the coastline. Now you can move when you see them do the martial law, wherever. If you see it, as a matter of fact, if you don't even see it in Ireland, but you see it in the United States, 
it might be a good time to move to a higher level elevation, get away from the goose. Yeah. That might make sense. But uh, otherwise, like I tell my children and my grandchildren, you live your life the way you should, day to day. You don't worry about, when you get up in the morning, you don't worry about crossing the street because you might get hit by a truck. Maybe you will, you know, but uh, just live the life the way you should. But maybe keep it in the back of your mind. You see the Americans getting uh, martial law going into effect, you better maybe want to go up in the hillside and camp out for a while. Well, there's, there's a couple of sayings. You know, and it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And failing to prepare is preparing to fail. So, basically, there's no harm. You know, if people stock up some firewood, because the four things you need are shelter, warmth, food, and water. They're the four things that you need. And toilet rolls. But, (laughs) have to show them the toilet rolls. And, 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 uh, whatever, a good cup of coffee. The, um... Uh, the the bottom line, you know, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of radio shows uh, where the truth is the announcer, you know, the uh, the the commentators like yourself yeah. are afraid of this. Yeah. Uh, you know, everybody talks about end times, yeah. but nobody talks about end times in my time. Everybody wants to talk about it. Oh well, maybe in a hundred years something might happen. You yeah. know, um, but uh, they certainly don't want to sit down and say, oh, wait a minute. Maybe in the next three or four years, this is going to be a reality. Um, uh, they don't want to do that. People don't want to do it. And, of course, you also have a lot of guys on radio talk shows that are selling stuff that they can't sell to people if, in fact, people don't think they're going to need it. Right? Yeah. And, and so they hate that idea of Jesus. And put Fletcher on here, and he said maybe we're not going to need that. Uh, you know, it's not good for their personal pocketbooks. So they're scared of it. Yeah, well, people uh, are very. You uh, know, I'll definitely say it, it's people. People who know us, um, we see it as information, and you. It depends how you see it. We see it as information. Some people might see it as fear porn. Some people might see it as something else. But we just see it for what it is. And you know, there's nothing you can do about it. If it comes in, and there's only so much you can prepare, and anything after that. Well, you just have to go with the go with the flow. That's just that's all you can do. Right. Yeah. That's and like I say, just live live your life like you should. I'm not a big. I'm not a. I'm not a preacher. I uh, know, but uh, uh, be a. You know, uh, just do the right thing and live properly. And and you 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 know, but maybe you know from this, uh, and particularly, you really need to get the my DVD. It's it's so very explanatory. It just puts a whole different light on this thing. Uh, it just really does, um, and like I said, I, I hope that I would be totally wrong, mm-hmm. uh, you know. But I don't think I am now. And and by the way, we had uh, Janet Napoliano, uh, Napolitano was the head of the Homeland Security. She quit about a year ago, and she leaving made a speech that stuck in everybody's head. She said that um, uh, absolutely we're going to get hit with something like a solar flare from the sun that's going to shut us down electronically. And then the fellow named Jim, or John, Ed, oh, I can't think of his first name for sure, Wolseley was the head of the CIA. I think it was James Wolseley. He said the same thing, totally on a different thing. He retired, and he said it's not a matter of if it's going to happen, but we are going to get solar flare activities that are going to shut us down. And he said, everybody has to be aware of it. And he says, I don't know when. See, now, I think both of them were referring to the Nibiru, the effects, et cetera. If they had come out and said it, they probably would have both had their brains blown out before they got across the street. But they both said that same thing, because what will happen when the electronic transmitting satellites are gone, period, when they are gone from uh, electronic impulses from this thing, it's caveman time. There's no fuel, there's no food, there's no lights, there's no electricity, there is no heat, there is nothing. We are going to be looking at each other and saying, what do we do now? And when they go out and generators go out on the earth, 
and the satellites go out, et cetera, et cetera. When that takes place, it'll be 5, 10, 20 years to get it all cranked back up again yeah. because we do not have spare parts of everything, yeah. and that's what we're talking about. Uh, the banker will be gone if you got a hundred thousand in the bank someplace. If you uh, happen to be in that good a situation, uh, you can kiss it goodbye because there's no nobody, there's no banking. It's all over. Yeah, and now no, you're going to know what's what. That's brilliant. No, Bob, you've been a uh, fantastic information there, and I think we'll have to do this in a, in a few, in a, maybe in a couple of months' time. We'll get you back on to do part two. We didn't even get a chance to talk about the water, but what I'll do is I'll try and um, have a quick chat with our listeners. Um, later on in the show, after right. uh, after the a only second thing guess. I want to say on the water is people have to really pay attention to it because this is real. They're stealing the water rights all over the globe. The Bush cabal are stealing the water rights, and it's not just a localized issue in Ireland. This is a global thing. No, is that sir. correct? Yes. Brilliant. Okay, Bob. Listen, it's mm. been fantastic having you on. Some great information. I'm going to pass you over to Steve, and Steve's going to get all your links and your details and uh, find out about how people can get in touch with you. Steve, yeah, okay, Bob. Great, Bob. It's been it's been absolutely fantastic. We've been looking forward to this interview with you for for weeks, and I feel we haven't even scratched the surface. There's a hell of a lot more. No, we can, that's true. Yeah, God I, bless you. I, I just I know there's so much more, but thanks for giving giving us up this this uh, this time. Well, your, your time this morning, and uh, it really is appreciated. I know your website is bobfletcherinvestigations.com. I will post that up on the on the chat room here and also on the website is there any other uh, ways people can get in touch or find out more about what you're doing or are all the links on the website no, no that's the best and it's the um, you know I have I have a, a couple of guys have uh, uh, bootlegged some stuff and, and spliced some junk together they had uh, uh, gotten into my uh, my computer and put some crap together and they, but the only place where people can really get the DVD I'm not I'm not making it available any place other than just our our own website, um, and uh, everything's there. I do have a section on the website with uh, a, a handful of uh, uh, amazing photographs of some of the underground facilities and and a couple of the maybe maybe possibly uh, some sightings of uh, Nibiru. But I I I'm and I'm telling you just personal situation here. Uh, I'm very skeptical about. It. The real good uh, people, with the people that just say they got a good shot and they think they see it in the background of something else, uh, it, it's not close enough for that yet. Um, it, it just isn't. Now, if you've got an infrared telescope with a, you know, as good as uh, the, the one that uh, uh, the Pope built in Arizona, uh, then you might get some good pictures. He's got good pictures, I'll bet. I want to tell you, he's got some good ones. Okay, Bob, that's brilliant. Listen, we're just just stay there with us uh, for a minute. We're going to go off to a musical yes, break, and we'll be back after this. Steve. This is Open Your Mind Radio on OYMRadio.com, UnitedWeStrike.com, and PeoplesInternetRadio.com. Yeah, I just couldn't help myself. I had to play that one there for all the Wham fans. Uh, George Michael and the other chap, Andrew uh, Ridgely, I believe his name is. Uh, yeah. yeah, I love yeah. your one Wham T-shirt there with Shh. Andrew and George on it. Very yeah, nice. Look at that. Yeah, look. See what it says <laughs> in the back. Wake me up before you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good information there from a Bob, wasn't it? A closet Wham fan. Um, um, yeah, brilliant information from Bob. What can, what, what can we say? Now, well, actually, I'm just you know push for time. So what we're going to do is we have uh, Finbar Markey from the Land League. Uh, just coming on to give us an update on what's going on with the Land League because there's an awful lot going on, a lot of positive stuff. And we've asked Finbar to come on just to give us an update. So we have about 10 minutes with Finbar. So good evening, Finbar. How are you? Hey, guys. Happy New Year to you and all your listeners. And the same to you, Finbar. And the same to you and happy birthday as well. Oh, don't talk to me about it. <laughs> yeah. We're not going to sing it, are we? No, 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 no. That's that's for another show. Okay, so Finbar, what's happening? What's the news? Give us the update on the Land League. There's a lot of stuff, but before we maybe get stuck into the... The biggest issue of the week and hopefully of the month, which is the K-Tech boycott that, that has kicked off this week. I'd just like to mention, first of all, that there's two new National Land League launches happening over the next month. In County Louth, next Saturday, Saturday the 17th, in Drogheda, in, in Narrow West Street, in the West Court Hotel in Drogheda. The West Court Hotel in Drogheda. So that's in the, in the street that splits Drogheda, right down the centre. 
and uh, we're going to have our launch there at three o'clock, and we're hoping, we're expecting a good big crowd. And because it's a Saturday, if people want to bring their kids along, there's no harm in the kids witnessing a bit of history. And the second launch is in Westmead in Mullingar on the seventh of February in the Greville Arms Hotel, and that starts at two thirty p.m. So that's the Greville Arms Hotel in Mullingar on the seventh on the seventh of February starting at 2.30 p.m. And again, if you've got anybody in the Midlands who'd like to get along to that, um, we have a bit more time to promo that than we do uh, the Loud Launch, but we're expecting a good turnout in both places. Okay, brilliant. Now, earlier on in the show, I did mention the KTEC, um, the, the do that's on the 26th. Is that the yeah. one you want to talk about? Yeah, yeah, maybe to give some background to people. I don't want to get into the... the Wise and wherefore. There's a, the word by word detail of letters that some of the lads received from the National Land League or lads in the National Land League received over the last week. But uh, just to give you some background on it, uh, there's a video going around at the moment of an eviction that occurred in Dundalk about two and a half, three years ago. It was a friend of mine, actually, a very good friend of mine, Eugene Dooley. And he was making a stand. He was one of the first people to make a stand. And he knew that he was single and he wasn't the best person to make a stand if you know what I mean to get public sympathy but he made a stand and the sheriff was ran twice and then eventually the sheriff hired K-Tech Tugs and on video on camera they smashed in his door with a sledgehammer while his brother was talking on the other side of the door so they actually knew that there was a head on the other side of the door now this was in the middle of Dundalk Um, the video doesn't show it but just after the doors were smashed in and there was quite a lot of violence against Eugene downstairs. About 150, 200 people gathered from the local VEC, the Adult Education VEC, and they, their teachers actually brought them down to witness history being repeating itself. So it wasn't a case that these people were purely here to go up. Uh, their teachers had taken them down with, you know, show, in shock, first of all, and to witness it, but also to show them history repeating itself again. So that was the first time that we came across K-Tech working in the eviction industry. I have to say, at that time, they were particularly thuggish. As you could, um, since then, there was a court case about something else, and it just was mentioned how they smashed that door in with a sledgehammer in an affidavit. And the master of the high court suggested to the plaintiff at the time that uh, he should really take that to the Gardaí Siakona, and he felt that, uh, he suggested, I should say, that possibly the sheriff had no right to hire a private company to do that because she gave the orders. This is Murray de Hearn, the famous or infamous Murray de Hearn in County Loud. Yeah. So that was the first time that we, we, we had any association or links or experience with KTEC. But since then, time and again, they come up as the security company that goes around dressed like paramilitaries and whose intentions are to intimidate homeowners, small business owners and farmers. And that's what they're doing around the country. So there's another popular picture that's going around at the moment of the owner of KTEC, or, or I think he is the owner, yeah, a guy called McGarry. And he's holding what has been described as a baseball bat, but it's actually a wooden post. And he's down at an attempted receivership and eviction on a, on a farm down the country. I think it's in Wicklow. And uh, again, these big, big lads carrying, in, in this case, wooden poles you know, to intimidate people. So this has gone on all over the country. And we also have been speaking to, there's a number of small security firms around the country who've actually come to us. We haven't asked them even. They've come to us and made a pledge and a commitment never to engage in this work. But what they're telling us is this, that KTEC are actually abandoning their current morally okay contracts, you know, with shops and retailers and this and that. They're actually not turning up because... They're following the dollar, and the dollar is where the, where the banks are, with evictions and receiverships. So, from and it is anecdotal reports at the moment, but it would appear from those reports that KTEC are not stuck for money. This this isn't a case of a company that's on the on 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 the edge and is taking this work. Even and even that doesn't correct it, but it's it, it's taking this work because they're they don't want to lose employees. They're actually employing more people rather than less, and they're not turning up for the regular contracts that they have. Another thing that stood out recently is that it would appear, back in the Eugene Dooley eviction, two and a half, three years ago, it was all Irish workers, Irish uh, security uh, people working with KTEC. But it would appear now, and this is not a racist comment, but I would, I would like to know why, what demographics 
caretaker are seeking now in their employees and what qualities and characteristics because it all seems to be big bulky Eastern European men and I don't know whether these men have had compulsory military training is that why is it because these men allegedly would not have any sympathy or compassion for Irish people over here maybe that's what they're thinking but we have noticed a significant change in the <coughs> characteristics of the security guards that are working for Caretech these days. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I mean, it's it's banging of order. This is something we've said before on a on a martial law basis about countries swapping their army personnel because Private, another yeah. an, another country's army will not have any empathy with their with a different um, um a different country's people. You know. Yeah, and they're just there for the money. So what happened since then is that. Uh, Terry uh, from the Ballynockin Inn, who's, who's a very proactive member of the National Anthony down in Wicklow, and a few other guys have been exchanging emails with McGarry from Caretech asking him to desist. Now, I've seen these emails and I've seen these letters myself, and there's nothing whatsoever threatening in them. In fact, the opposite, I would suggest. They're asking uh, Caretech to come to the table. But we've announced this protest on the 26th, which is at the Sunday World Irish Country Music Awards. Now, all of us have one or two country songs that we like, and this is not, we don't have a problem with country music. But K-Tech, this is in the City West Hotel on the 26th, as I say, K-Tech have a permanent contract with the City West Hotel, and they'll be doing the security on the night for the Sunday World Irish Country Music Awards. And it is a perfect opportunity for us to, at a national level, point out and highlight to the country how we are really going backwards and we're degrading and how we're treating our citizens because you're right in, when you talk about a private army you know these Blackwater and these companies that become global private armies that go into Iraq and things like that of course yeah well, at the moment KTAC will appear if you, look, if you want to look at characteristics what company is most likely to become that in Ireland it would appear that KTAC's well in the way now yeah and maybe there's a reason for that a bigger reason that we're not aware of Timber. well you know I, I remember reports at the last, I think it was the European elections, was it, or maybe the, the, la, the nas, last national elections, that in many areas the Guardia Síochána were not escorting the ballot boxes, that it was private security firms. And I suspect maybe, I, I don't, I'm not going to say this 100%, but if my recollection is in any way right, I think KTEC got some work doing that. Now, when we look at what ha- happens in other countries that we consider to be less civilised, <laughs> in reality, you have to question whether we are, um, you know, elections get rigged. Yes, and exactly. And that's the apparatus that does it. Well, look at the situation in Cork. I mean, there's actually footage of boxes being taken out and boxes being replaced. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, you know, so if you go back to 1981 with the election in Dublin of Thomas Magulla and um, the guy that died in a car in Russia is alleged to have it. It may have been proven, I can't recall. But um, what was his name? Lawler uh, was alleged to have brought boxes in full of Fianna Fáil votes and nobody know, knew where they came from. You know, and McGill was supposed to be a hand-down winner in that election, and it was stolen from him. So it's it's not new. I could tell you some anecdotal reports from County Loud, where I come from, but to do so might put other people in trouble, so I won't. But, uh, you know, it's been known. It, it, nothing would surprise me these days. But, but getting back to KTEC anyway. So the situation was we started to publicise about the protest. We notified the hotel. We notified the organisers of the event, and we notified KTEC. KTEC's response, rather than come to talk to us, was to send legal letters to five members of the National Land League and other groups. And these letters, I won't go into detail, I don't want to, to you know, every individual has to deal with their matters themselves. Yeah. But all I can, say, can tell you is that the letters smacked of des- absolute legal desperation. Yeah. And there was two words that they used in terms of the protest. They said that the protest would be unjustifiable and unlawful. Now, if that's all they're relying on, first of all, it's a civic protest. It's not interfering with people's actual work. Uh, it's, it's really engaging market forces, notifying people and asking them to buy consciously <laughs> or to, you know, small businesses who might need security. We're asking them, well, listen, why don't you get a company that's ethical? Yeah. When, when it comes to talking about uh, ethical commerce and African goods or South American goods, we love talking about it. But here's a goods, here's a product, here's a service in Ireland that's far from ethical. 
you know, and so let's take that same attitude. So this is market forces that we're engaging, asking the hotel and putting a bit of pressure. Let's admit it. We're putting a bit of pressure on. But they sent this letter anyway. So there's no question about uh, the lawfulness of the protest. It's a peaceful protest outside a hotel. So they must be relying on the word unjustifiable. And then, you know, when it comes down to unjustifiable, we have video footage of what they did with the sledgehammers to that to Eugene's house and nearly killed his brother in the, in the meantime, possibly. Could have. Uh, we have video, we have photographs of loads of different activities from K- that K Tech have engaged in that are far from ethical, you know, or are justifiable. So, in terms of, so if that's what they're relying on, it's unjustifiable and it's unlawful, this protest. Just, well, a, just a question for you. What's the possibility of a, a security company supporting the Land League? And, we and we do have a couple of companies uh, that yeah. are on board, and we actually we had a meeting uh, yesterday evening in Dublin where we spoke about, you know, making better efforts to get companies publicly on board yeah. so that, you know, people will have a choice. People will know who's ethical, who's not ethical. I'll hire these guys. And also, it'll put KTEC themselves under pressure. But what, I'm, what I'm talking about is actually having the security companies come together who are ethical and sending their men out when KTEC turn up so we meet force with force. Well, well, that's an interesting possibility, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think that's, you know, they come in more with the bully boy tactics, so we ring up air security people and then um, ask these ethical security companies to come and support the Land League and have their men turn up and say, right, if you're going to look for trouble, these guys here are going to, uh, you know, going to take care of us. They're going to pacify you. They're going to pacify you. You know, so um, nice but <laughs> just just looking at the time, we need to wrap up quickly. Just give yeah. us them two dates and the locations, times and dates of the uh, the launch parties. Yeah. So the first one is in County Louth. It's in Drogheda. It's a narrow west street, which is the main street through Drogheda, and it's a it's at three p.m. in the West Court Hotel. That's three p.m. in the West Court Hotel. Should be a good crowd out for that. That's on a Saturday. Saturday coming, and then in Mullingar on the seventh of February. That's the seventh of February. In the Greville Arms Hotel at 2:30 p.m., we have the launch of the West Mead Land League, and that that is going to be a good, good, good evening as well. And on top of that, we have the big protest. If you don't normally, because this is the first National Land League national boycott per se, and it's such a serious issue, we need to win this one. We need to get people out. So I know there's protests left, right, and centre day and night, but if we can win this boycott now. We will send a message tr- throughout the entire country to all businesses who might possibly in, into the future engage in evictions and things. They will get the message pretty quick. But we need to get the people out on the 26th of January. Rain, hail, sleet or snow. So if people could send, spread the we- message as much as possible. Brilliant stuff. Okay, Finbar. Um, Thanks Steve's for the time, guys. That's no problem. Fin- uh, Steve's going to get your details very quickly. And then um, what's up? Nothing. Okay. You're gonna what, g- what details are we going <laughs> to get? No, his, uh, the website, Facebook and all that kind of stuff. Okay, Finbar, again, thanks for, thanks for the information. Thanks for coming on. Can no you throw, throw out the other, the other information there, the Facebook and the website as well? Yeah, so we're, we have a blog spot, so it's nationallandleagueblogspot.com. So that will be www.nationallandleagueblogspot.com. Uh, we have local Land League Facebook pages for nearly every county around the country now. So if you can, if there's none for your county, we don't have any in Cork, but that's going to be happening soon. Uh, if there's none in your county, go to your nearest county. Just type in the name of the county and the word Land League after it, because it's better that you get people close by to you who'll be able to get in contact, have a cup of tea, talk about where you're at, and things like that, rather than necessarily trying to go through a central system. So go to your local Land League Facebook page. And send a message, and somebody will get back to you within the next couple of days. We're pretty busy, so it may take a couple of days to get back. Brilliant stuff. Okay, Finbar, just stay with us there, and we'll just go to a, a bit of music very quickly, and we'll be back after this. Thanks a million, guys. Okay. Okay. Well, I wasn't ready for a piece of music, but you're here. Here we go. This is Open Your Mind Radio on OYMRadio.com, UnitedWeStrike.com, and PeoplesInternetRadio.com. I don't even know who that was. I know she drives me crazy. Who was it? The, the fine, I think it was Fine Young Cannibals. Yeah, I wasn't ready for that. I would If I had known, I would have had another, another Wham song ready. Uh, anyway, yeah, Fine Young Cannibals, she drives me crazy. Again, uh, good information by Finbar, nationallandleagueblogspot.com. I will type, I, I'll pop that into the, 
into the chat again just before we leave. Uh, what else did I want to say? Just real quick. Uh, do you remember that telescope you spoke of? Yeah, Lucifer, yeah. Yeah, well, I just checked on forums.catholic.com. And seemingly, the Vatican did not name a telescope Lucifer. The Vatican Observatory shares space, no pun intended, with other organisations and groups. The Vatican Observatory does not own each piece of equipment, nor can it give official names or nicknames to things it does not own. Another group installed the telescope it nicknamed Lucifer. It's a telescope built by the Max Planck Institute for Extraterrestrial Physics, and according to their own website, it stands for LBT Near Infrared stereoscopic utility with camera and integral field unit for extra galactic research because that's, so that's easy for you to say <laughs> <laughs> bloody wish so seemingly when you, when you put it all together it kind of, it's, nickna- it's kind of an acronym of Lucifer yeah. uh, it's noted on the website that the, its official abbreviation has been changed now to Lucy L-U-C-I oh ok yeah. no here's a little piece of useless information for you so, a brilliant show, brilliant information from two guests there, Planet X. Make up your own mind, do your research, you know, and um, look, it's not going to do you any harm just to put something aside and do what you can. And if nothing happens, well, brilliant, you have extra food to use, no problem at all, you'll save yourself a few quid. Right, okay, just a couple of things, Alan's week and Steve's week. Over to you, Steve. Ah, how's your week? Right. Um, yeah, my week's been fine. I know we're, we are kind of stuck for time, so I'll, I'll, I'll shorten it down. I was checking out some videos during the week. Uh, do you remember, we, we did kind of, we did kind of talk about the chap in New Zealand who was in a coma and there was kind of a lot of court cases going on. His family wanted to try high dose vitamin C, uh, for, as, as a cure and the, the, the hospital said no. Eventually, the hospital through kind of the family took it to court people are probably familiar with the story anyway but they agreed they gave him high doses of vitamin c i believe it's called liposomal vitamin c and he started to make an improvement he was then shipped to another hospital where they continued eventually after some some more intervention they eventually continued that treatment but at a lower dose so the family got this liposomal vitamin c the wife gave it to him and he made a full recovery so there's a lot of information videos around the internet saying how good this liposomal vitamin c is now, i done some research during the week, and I found another website where they kind of debunk the liposomal. Another guy, a biochemist, he's done some, some uh, he's done a lot of testing, and he, he actually, would you believe, I had it up on the screen here, and it's it's gone now, I switched it off. But his website is called Receverin, R-E-C-E-V-E-R-I-N, where he talks about this, it's it's vitamin C, but it's high, it's, it's called DHAA. I can't remember the technical name for it. I, I wouldn't even try to, to, to say it without having it in front of me. But it's it's vitamin C, but it's high in uh, something anyway. But he, he his research has shown him that uh, it does give you a hell of a lot more of a boost when you when you use this product. You can buy it on his website. It's for seventy nine US dollars. It's supposed to be the bee's knees, or you can make it yourself through uh, the fruit courgette. I think the, the the American, when he was talking about it, it, was a zucchini. I had to Google that one. I didn't know what it was. But he was saying the skin from a courgette, you, you do this process with it with some gelatin and a blender and some, um, uh, what's the thing, uh, the, the technical name for vitamins, ascorbic acid. There we go, ascorbic acid. You do this process and eventually you have this kind of green smoothie. And it's supposed to be absolutely fantastic in raising vitamin C levels, and it's supposed to be beneficial for a whole host of things. Uh, check it out. I will find. The, I'll get the link to to his website, and I'll pop it up again on the chat before. Well, before we go, uh, that's that's kind of it in a nutshell. How was your week? Okay. Well, very quickly, um, I had the joys of um, being in A and E on Monday night for five hours with my son, um, and I was twenty quid lighter after the experience as well with the car parking fees. Um, it's unbelievable. You know, I, I said to people, has anybody ever seen a TD in an A&E department? I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't think so. Now, I did hear today that a friend of mine's mother was in public A&E ward. And who did she get talking to but Nicky Bourne from Westlife? He was in there as well, in the public ward. I'm not familiar with the chap, sorry. Okay. So, he was on, um, I think he was one of the judges on the X Factor or somewhere along the line. He was a singer in Westlife anyway. It was good to know that, you know, people like that are in the public ward anyway. But five hours I was there and I was lucky because only five hours, you know. So, um, this has to change. The, the world has to change. And very quickly, 
Um, during the week on Facebook, somebody was going on about chemtrails and they were saying, "Oh, this is a load of crap!" And the, these, you know, chemtrails. It's, you know, you're 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 missing the point. It's all physics. It's nothing got to do with uh, chemicals, bad chemicals, and stuff like that. And I said, "Oh, I said I know a chap called Vin, who's on PIR, and um, Vin is looking for somebody to have a good debate regarding chemtrails and sublimation and all that kind of stuff. So I, I kindly, on behalf of Vin, I hope Vin doesn't mind, but on behalf of Vin, I thought, this, chap na- this chap's name was Daryl. And I said, um, Daryl, I know somebody who would love a debate with you on chemtrails. And we, he, he runs a radio show. He has his own radio show. And he'd love to talk to you about it and have a debate about it. So I made a suggestion to Daryl to send me over his details. And I would happily pass them on to Vin, and we could have a really good debate about chemtrails, um, because Dara didn't doesn't think there are chemtrails at all. And um, and I said that'd be brilliant. I look forward to it. Dara, send me over your details, and um, I'll send them on to Vin. And would you believe I never heard anything more from Dara? There's, I mean, yeah. Did you really think Dara was going to reply? <laughs> I don't think so. He, it's, again, he's like one of these people who come on with his with his his, his uh, opinion because he's opinionated and, yeah. and just put it out there, but yet doesn't have the cojones to back it up. You know, put your money where you're about this. If you're going to turn around and say that you know chemtrails are not chemtrails and it's on only physics, well, I know Vin was dying to speak to somebody um, and have a debate with them, and I I kind of gave him the challenge, and Dara disappeared in Facebook and never to be seen again. So, you know, it's just one of them things. What can, what can you say? Now, next week. Big, bit of a controversy, I think, for next week. But it should be enjoyable anyway. We have a lady on called Fiona O'Leary. Who has two autistic children. And she's against MMS. Using MMS for autism. Not for all the other stuff. But just autism. So, you know, in, in fairness to, you know, uh, both sides of the camp. It's only right that we have... Um, somebody's opinion on what they think about the whole MMS and autism now myself and Steve have used MMS for various things but we've never used it for autism and she has two autistic kids so it's only right to have a fair balance I think so Fiona's going to be coming on and also uh, we're going to have Dr. Rima coming on for about uh, about 30 minutes Dr. Rima LeBeau she and her husband are being attacked they're closing down the bank accounts. They're closing down everything. They're trying to shut them down. And they're going through hell down there. So Dr. Rima wants to come on to have a word and just let people know what's going on. Uh, because maybe this will be a Ebola thing. I don't know. So that's going to be interesting as well. So tune in for that. And um, we will see you next week. What well, actually on the mark. You know who Vin has on? It's funny. I just, I just actually asked Vin. I just sent a message there to see who he's on. With, and I, again, look, it's, it's a minute, a couple of seconds to go. It's a, it, Vin's show is always good anyway, no matter who's on, even if it's just Vin on on his own. Okie dokie. So um, tune in for Vin later on. For myself, have a great week. Stay safe. Take it easy. For myself, Alan James. Bye bye. Okay, and myself, Stephen George. Again, take it, take it handy. Have a good week and uh, love and kisses to you all. <laughs> Best of luck. We we'll do it again next week. Stay tuned for Vincent on People's Internet Radio. Bye bye. Open your mind.